Hi guys. This video is going to be about autism because it is April. It is Autism Awareness Month. And as you may or may not know, I do myself have autism. Well, it was actually diagnosed as Asperger's Syndrome. Um, funny though, because someone I got in an argument with who was in my friends list on Facebook of uh, <laughs> accused me of um, not actually having it, but I do have the paperwork to prove it. Um, not that that's really any random person's business, but yeah, I do. Um, so I just want to talk a little bit about it, um, how it affects me personally, um, because it is different for different people who um, have the disorder. Um, and... <laughs> I actually should ap apologise to a guy called Autistic Genius because I didn't see what he meant at first. Because um, he called it a different way of thinking, which it is a different way of thinking. Um, meaning, you know, our brains work differently to um, someone we would call a neurotypical, a normal person. You know, in the um, in the autism community, we call them neurotypicals. <clears throat> um, where to start for me? Um, well, unfortunately for me, it was never picked up on in school. So, all the way through school, and for you know most of my life up until now well up until a couple of years ago I think I was basically living and thinking that I was just a weirdo that I was just an antisocial scaredy cat weirdo um because I can remember at school, I absolutely hated doing group activities. I hated it. It was my worst nightmare. I would have rather have been sitting in my most least favourite lesson, which was usually math or religious ed education or even PE. I hated PE because I hated running. <laughs> I still hate running. I'd rather jog. I'd probably jog if my life depended on it, because I hate running. <laughs> um, you know, I'd rather do any of that uh, than work in a group, especially... Well, actually, if I was working with, you know, my own little circle of friends, I would have been absolutely fine. It was when I got stuck in a group of kids I was not familiar with. Um... Even though I knew them because they were in my year, but because, you know, I didn't interact with them enough, I suppose. It, um, I felt awkward. I used to feel awkward a lot, most of the time. Um, and again, just, I felt like the weirdo of the class, you know. Like I, I didn't fit in. Actually, I often still feel like that these days. I just don't fit in anywhere. Which does put me off volunteering. Although, actually I'll come to that in a bit. Um, so, yeah, you know, I used to get, like my dad, he would always say, you know, I have held jobs, but it's been absolutely years since I last had one. And I actually hate admitting that. Even when I go and see a new advisor at the job centre and they ask, you know, when's the last time you had a job? Um, too long, that's <laughs> what I want to say. <laughs> yeah, I've held jobs, but when I was, you know, just left school, I couldn't even finish the college course. I tried electrical installations to be an electrician. So, I probably still could. If I had the money to retake the course, 
or I could, hardy ha ha, get the job centre to pay for the course. You know, I could probably, excuse me, I've got an itchy nose. I could probably um, pass. I could pass the practical. I know I could pass the practical. Um, I know my flat looks unsafe because I've got cables dangling here, there and everywhere, but it isn't. Only because I know what the cables are and what they do. <laughs> but to anyone new coming into this flat, they'd probably think, oh my god. You know, especially when you look at that, it's just spaghetti junction, but there's nothing there to worry about. Um, but Dad used to say, go and ask there for a job, just go in and ask, blah, 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 you know, just to go in and ask, but the problem I had, and I always, don't know if I actually told anyone back then, but it always went through my mind that it wasn't as easy as just going in and asking for me, I didn't find it as easy as that, um, and that is one thing I think that used to depress me as well, and still does, I see people, even at checkouts, you know, complete strangers just chatting away as if they know each other. And I struggle to do things like that. I couldn't do it. I can't. It's hard to explain. Um, and it does make me feel that if I do say something stupid on the spot, spare of the moment sort of thing that people are going to think oh what a weirdo there's always that in the back of my head um, anything I do in public even though I see loads of other people do the exact same thing but as soon as I do it or think about doing it I get the anxiety because I worry about what others are going to think um, even though I shouldn't, not really, but it's always it's always there at the back of my mind. So I do actually suffer a lot of social anxiety, especially on my own. I hate going out on my own. It's not so bad going around town because I'm familiar with the town. I've been here 33 years. And I was born and bred in this town, so I'm pretty used to it. I'm pretty used to the people, the shops. Um... But I have to admit, I do find it difficult to go into a new shop. You know, one that's just opened. Even if it's one that interests me, like Black Records. It was quite a while before I sort of went in that shop to have a look. But I don't know why, it's just the anxiety that puts me off. I used to miss loads of appointments. Um, when I was actually claiming normal job seekers allowance over here in Britain, they don't do that now. It's all uh, changed. It's all a uh, universal credit, whatever that is. Um, I haven't been switched to that, at least not yet, and I don't know if they will with um, existing claimants. But all new claimants will get universal credit. Um, but yeah, I used to miss quite a few appointments just because social anxiety would get the better of me and I'd just bottle it. Especially if it was going to somewhere new. It would like take three or four appointments before I'd actually go. And uh, someone who is actually subscribed to my videos will, will confirm. I know she doesn't comment on my videos, but she will confirm. I don't know how many times I put off meeting her for the first time because I would actually get icky tummy probably through the stress and anxiety of um, just going out and meeting someone you know I don't know how many months we'd spoken to each other online you know and she doesn't live that far from here <laughs> but uh, you know it's embarrassing to admit it that you know I find things like that so hard And I think a lot of people with autism get depressed because they look around them and they can see other people doing things, well, to us, easily, and we struggle with it. I can't 
say that's what everyone with autism feels, but that's at least how I feel and how that I think others would feel. But, There's other things as well that can make us seem antisocial unintentionally, such as um, lack of eye contact. You've probably noticed when you watch my videos, my eyes aren't on the camera. I can't just constantly stare at the camera like, say, a TV host could. Or even other YouTubers, you know, when they're doing vlogs like this, they continuously look at the camera. I struggle to do that. I struggle to main, maintain eye contact, well, with people and seemingly the camera for some reason. Don't know why. Camera's not a person, so I don't know why I can't keep my eyes in line with that, but never mind. Oh, dear me. Um... It does take some people with autism a little bit longer to reply to a question than your average person. Um, which can make it seem like we are ignoring people, but we're not. The thing is, it takes our brains a lot longer to process what's been asked and then process a reply and obviously those who have or no actually I'm going to rephrase that before I even say it those that are higher on the um, spectrum than others will probably take a lot longer um, I know I can stall for an answer um, and it's a really weird feeling, but it, I've, I've mentioned this on a friend's post who also has autism. She agreed, and so did another friend. It's a weird feeling. I could be sitting here like this, could have a friend there, they could ask me a question, I'll hear it, I'll know I'll consciously hear it, I'm sitting here and I've heard the question, but it's just like the gears are still grinding and processing the fact that all of a sudden, ding, my brain goes, oh, I've been asked a question, I better answer. <laughs> it's like it just takes ages for the signal to go from the ears through your brain, you know, the part that controls the hearing, to the necessary part of the brain that will would process the, art, the question and the answer. <laughs> you know, then take time to get from there down to your mouth. Uh, it's, I find it a weird feeling because, like I said, I sit here and I know the question's been asked, but it's like, the gears are grinding, but, you know, nothing's happening. <laughs> At least not for a few seconds. <clears throat> and sometimes, it just goes all together and I'll just end up going, what did you ask? <laughs> Because by the time it's processed, I've just totally forgot what they asked. It's just gone out of my head. Um, which I guess is really, really annoying to people. I don't do it all the time. Um, and I'm even worse if I've got my head stuck into an activity I enjoy, like my Lego. I'll totally switch off from my surroundings when I'm building with Lego. You know... The radio could be on, I wouldn't know what the heck is being played, it'll just be background noise, you know, I'm not paying attention to it. <laughs> the news could be on, and I wouldn't even have a clue what the news said. <clears throat> so, uh, I guess that's why I like communicating online a lot more. Because when people ask me a question over PM, I've got that time there to process the question and give a reply. I'm not feeling pressured like I would if someone was standing here in person. Um, I'm just trying to think. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I've missed. 
apart from kicking the cat off my lap again. <laughs> um, I can't think of anything right this minute. But like I said, it it varies between everyone. Um, sensors, that was another one. Um, and meltdowns. I personally don't have meltdowns that often. I did probably three weeks to a month ago, one night. Um, with a child especially, it can look like a temper tantrum. But it isn't. It's just basically they break down because... Their senses, like their eyes, ears, smell, just get so overwhelmed, they literally just break down and pretty much, you know, look like they're throwing a temper tantrum because they can't have their own way. Um, I never did that as a kid, I don't think. I don't remember ever doing that. Um, the other thing we can do is go into shutdown, which I do do on a bit more of a regular basis, which is basically I'll not feel like talking to anyone, and if I do, it's a very select few of pe few people. Very select few. Um, and I will feel a bit depressed, and I'll just pretty much sit here at the PC, usually maybe play some music until I snap out of it. Because uh, all I can do is pretty much ride the wave. Same as when I go in, when I do have the melt. In fact, I don't know if it would have been due to depression, but I used to get them a lot. Now I don't. Um, very rarely, anyway, thankfully, because I don't like them. <laughs> They're embarrassing and they don't feel good either. Because uh, it can make you say stupid things, and it can make you think stupid things as well. Uh, um, but going back to the senses... You may have noticed... It's a bit hard not to notice. That I love anything that lights up. Anything. It could be, you know, my spotlights up there, Christmas lights, bicycle lights, flashlights, torches, lanterns, barricade lights. Because to me, looking at lights like that is visually appealing. It's. And some of them can even um, make me feel calm and relaxed. Um. So again, you know, it's, you can, they call them um, sensory lights, you can get them, you know, where they gently, like a string of lights like I've got around the room, but they gently sort of fade in and out and change colour and you can change the settings, so they're quite relaxing. Um, but uh, we can also be sensitive to certain things, including noises. Um, I was trying to think, what do I dislike? Loud noises. I actually find that certain sounds, I don't actually have to be overly loud, but certain sounds do actually hurt my ears and I don't like them. Um, I mean, as a kid, and this is embarrassing as well, I used to run away when Dad was um, using the drill to put shells and things up, I'd run away. I'd hide upstairs because I hated the sound of the drill. It actually scared me as a kid. It scared me, which is a bit weird nowadays because you know I've used them. You know, used them to build this table and put the shelves on the wall and all sorts of things. So it's something I th I'm pretty certain I grew out of. Engines is another one. A loud, high-revving engine 
especially if I'm right next to it, I hate um, but uh, on the other end of the scale there is certain things that we like for example one reason I do have um, a lot of cuddly toys, a lot of plushies, is because I love the feel. It's the same with animal fur. I just love the soft feeling. And to me, it's very calming and very relaxing. And the same goes for the plushies. I find them... Um, Especially if they're made from a certain material. I mean, there's a certain brand of My Little Pony plushie that I buy because I absolutely love the feel of the fabric they use. That's why, as well as the style of them, but, you know. Oh. Um. Oh. I did just think of one that slipped out of my head again. So, this is just my own personal perspective of having autism for me. It's not going to be the same for everyone. We are all different. And uh, as I often see um, the Asperger's groups I follow, or autism groups I follow, say, once you've met one person with autism, you've met one person with autism. So, um, I do hope you found this video interesting. Hope you learned something from it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. I um, will do my best to answer them. Um, of course, give me a like. There's a thumb here somewhere if the cat gets out of the way. <laughs> um, I think in the next video, I'm not going to do it in this one, but in the next one I'll cover myths. Because uh, <laughs> there's a lot of myths um, with autism. But go, like I said, I'll go into that in the next video. But uh, as I said, thanks for watching, and uh, I will talk to you again pretty soon. Bye.